Good morning, folks. 2017 is now fully underway as we begin the second week of the year. We've got weather, space weather, earthquakes, and news from far above our heads. Let's get started over at spaceweathernews.com. We're finding the last 24 hours on our star were quiet, little surface surge in the southern hemisphere, but no eruptive activity or ejecta. No sunspots either, so there are still no solar flares. Next, we're going to come to the solar wind telemetry, and on the left side in purple, you can see the start of the peak speed of this coronal hole stream. No more fluctuations. She's steady as can be. So despite being above average intensity in the solar wind, the geomagnetic effects aren't even sniffing storm conditions this morning. Central coronal hole isn't terribly large, but as it faces Earth today, the earthquake watch peaks. Be sure to check out the latest alert maps throughout the day. Top rumble we've seen thus far was a 5.9 in Papua New Guinea, not labeled red because it's not significant for the region, barely even bothered them, I'd imagine. Next, we're coming to Chandra, where visible light and X-ray views are combined across a slice of the sky no bigger than the full moon. And yet, in that tiny area of the heavens, these astronomers declare that around 5,000 black holes are visible in that tiny field. Now, while these short summary videos cannot break down the entire black hole disagreement with electric theorists versus mainstream, it's a disagreement of physics, not existence, however, and whatever it is that we commonly call black holes, appear to be vastly more abundant than astronomers could have dreamed. Next, we're coming to the Canary Islands, where seismic activity beneath the volcanoes is on the rise. Eyes open there. To the southeast, we had horrendous flooding in parts of South Africa, killing at least two and creating extremely dangerous conditions. You'll see the remnants of that storm in South Africa as we come to the pressure and radar forecast. Southeastern South America, bit of a flood risk as well. To the north, things are cold. North India slapped with a cold wave that is trying to reach down towards not-so-northern areas. And the story is the same to the west across Italy, Greece, and Turkey, where a powerful low cutting across the area sucked a serious cold cell down into it. You're going to see that cell here over Turkey, having already run in from the Mediterranean. It fades while UK and Norway you are taking your own convergence line over the next day or so. In the U.S., that rainfall event in the West is ongoing, going to continue. Cold, cold, cold in the East, but at least the main cell is moving off the land now. Folks, the Observing the Frontier conference is exactly three months away. We've got Dr. Robitaille, Dr. Claridge, Dr. Dunning, Dave Talbot, Eugene Bagashoff, and more. The guys from Fly on the Wall will be there, and of course, among the presentations will be the most updated method of earthquake forecasting. Come on out to Albuquerque for the Observer's Event of the Year. Website members, yesterday you got two deeper looks and an episode of Fly on the Wall. We've also made some changes to QuakeWatch.net, and I'd hope you all go check those out as well. Still got weather looks for Australia up through Asia to come, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.40 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.